grandma, she can't be mad at you for it. You know what I mean? Well, it depends on your grandma. Uh, well, I guess if your my, grandma was like the daughter of Anton LaVey, then she might have a problem with Jesus. But my grandma had a problem with everybody. Uh, she was my, I was her favorite. Uh, but like, so my grandma wasn't like, she was a backwoods Southern Minnesota lady. Yeah. So she would show up with like, like it was a sm like if we went on a road trip with your, my grandma, she would rent and then she had to go to the bathroom and she didn't have to know these people. She would knock on their doors to ask to use their bathroom. Oh my God. And then, then she would also like, she like one year we were at Thanksgiving and cause she didn't, she was an older lady. So she, and she was big my grandma was like when is she, until she got the spine she she was my grandma was like six two big old german lady yeah and uh she uh she one year she showed up with a pee bucket for thanksgiving because she didn't want to walk down the stairs so she would just squat over the pee bucket when she needed to pee in the living room Oh my God! Yeah, so I, I have a, I have a different relationship with my grandma when she was at the, the she broke out of the assisted living place twice and uh, went back to the farm where it got condemned because that was how bad the farm was. Yeah, and they condemned it because of all the asbestos that had built up since the 1900s there. Yeah, so they're like, Holy yeah, shit. yeah. So it was like. It was, I don't know how many acres, but it was acres, you know, and with the, they just sold the house. Uh, it was county or whatever. They basically got 13000 for this little farm because they just tore down the house. And right. It, it, because nobody, because it didn't have like, like sometimes the, the piping was so old you couldn't, uh, they would go to the well pump and he get the water out of the well pump, my grandparents. Right, and then to get it warm, they would put it on a wood burning stove. And yeah, then, and then they would just dump it in the tub. Right, old school. Yeah, no, old, no, no, no electrical, no nothing. Probably. Yeah. Well, they they had my grandpa. They had a like they just it was just an old house. Yeah, and if you got water from that the the tap, you were probably getting lead poisoning. Right. <laughs> so that right. So she. Uh, well, like one, like she was like my this, my grandma was banned from playing bingo at the assisted living place, cause not cause she cheated, but she was not a gracious winner. Yeah, uh, so she, she's rubbing in everybody's faces. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck she, you, Gladys. Yeah, and that that's not a very like cause she's from Minnesota and everybody would be like oh. Like, cause you hear that phrase Minnesota nice shit, but my grandma was like, people would be confused when they meet my grandma. They'd be like, is your grandma really from Minnesota? I'm like, yeah, born and raised. She yeah. just, she just didn't like uh, anybody. You no, know, she was she me. an immigrant or no, no, she just, she just we like our whole family has like we're we're caring people, but we're very outspoken. Like I'm. For, I got banned where my mom lives. I got banned from the, the Walmart. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> in, in, in New Ulm. Because uh, I got into a fight with uh, um, the Walmart people at the auto care center. Oh, yeah. Because I called down there, and they said they were open, and they weren't. And then I used, uh, I don't know, can you say retard on this shit? You like, can say whatever you want. Okay. Well, I accidentally called everybody retarded at the... At the Walmart new in New Alm, and the and the manager and I didn't even say it loud. I just said it under my breath. Yeah. And the manager goes, "What'd you just say?" I was like, "Well, I just called everybody fucking retarded," which was confusing to him. He's like, "Sir, you can't say, like, you can't call people retarded." I'm like, "I have cerebral palsy. I could call anybody I want retarded. You fucking <laughs> retard." <laughs> and he's like, he got on his fake. Uh, he got on his fake little walkie-talkie. Like, yeah, he's like, "Sir, you need to leave." Like he's the only Walmart in town. Yeah, and, and then, and then I have an aunt that, like, um, my aunt Chris. Which, if you go to New Alm, they have like a a Dairy Queen, but it looks like a Tweaker Den. So yeah. you don't you don't want to go there, right? Because like, they 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 still have COVID hours there. <laughs> they're, they're still doing COVID hours. Like the lady will charge you for your uniform and then try to double charge you if you work there. I guess. What the fuck? But yeah, it's a really like yeah, and then it's uh, like you go there. So my 
Uh, you know, most Dairy Queens, you can use the bathroom, like, this is 15 years ago. So, you know, um, my cousin Colton had to use the bathroom, and the lady at the Dairy Queen said, no, we don't let customers use the bathroom. And then my aunt proceeded to call her all sorts of names and was banned from the Dairy Queen for life in New Ulm. So it's a family theme. We, yeah, we, you we, just get banned <laughs> from places. <laughs> like, it's like, because we're nice, but we just, like, I don't know. And I, see, I didn't, like. Well, I think we, I think it's more of a, speak about this town. Like, is it like. It's Are there a, a lot of meth heads and? Well, no, it's it's a weird little. It's a German town. Yeah, and I'm not from there. Right. Like I, I was oh, born, you're an outsider. Well, and I was born. I was born in Minnesota, but I was raised in Eastern Washington. Okay. Where like it's very like, and back in the day when it was very militia oriented. Yeah. Um. So it was um, uh, or just like all that stuff, and everybody in. My town is very, uh, like, outspoken. Like yeah. if they, That's a polite way to say neo-Nazi. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's the politest way I've ever heard you say, I grew up around a town full of militant neo-Nazis, <laughs> because that's all that there was in eastern Washington when you were growing up. <laughs> there was only like five, okay? Yeah. There were outspoken people, they, you know. <laughs> no, so we didn't like... So our neo-Nazism was a more progressive neo-Nazism. Yes, the 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 the, yeah, the fucking. We didn't know. We so our neo- the endangered species of neo-Nazis, the highly progressive ones. Yeah. So they, so they like we didn't mind. Like we we like black people and Mexicans. We just didn't like people from Seattle. Yeah. It's like, so if you came in there because you got the sunglasses and we'd be like, we'd look at you and be like, oh, he's from a city and he wants to bring. Like, I, I was just recently, I did a show a couple of years ago and I took a dude from West Virginia to a show in my county. Yeah. And I asked the guy what was wrong with the county. And he goes, man, like you would think the tweakers or mm-hmm. like, uh, you know. All that stuff, and he goes, "Man, we got five coffee houses in town." That was, <laughs> that was his big complaint. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, the coffee houses, but purely out of secretary <laughs> purposes. The neo Nazis yeah. like, "Well, we gotta have our own fucking coffee shop now." Yeah. No, so no, no, we it was like, well, because our our county is weird in this sense. It's like our my town was half white, half Mexican. Like it wasn't, and so we got like for a town of like six thousand people, we got or nine thousand now. We got like three Mexican grocery stores, so it's like yeah, it's, it's always been, it's always been like. Uh, now is it part of like a metropolitan or is it kind of out on its own? It's way out on its own. Right, right, it's right. Way, right. It's way, it's way. So off. it's like a migrant town, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's basically the like it's. We have like our heritage, most people's heritage from there is their great grandparents from were like from Missouri, right? And our because a lot of we have a lot of Mormons where I'm yeah. from, yeah. Oh, shit. yeah, so like, yeah, so like, we, so definitely had some militias, yeah. We weren't like we that we just when you think of Washington state, like. Um, like you don't really think of Mormons, I never knew there was that many Mormons way out there, oh, yeah, because it's it's like it's. The Mormons, like, so the Mormons back in the day, like, we were considered, like, in Idaho and eastern Washington all the way down to Nevada because of all the, because eastern Washington is climatized desert. It's yeah. all rocks and sagebrush and no trees. That's why we don't like people from Seattle. Right. Because they have the trees and they want, they want all this, like, happy love stuff and yeah and like they they like want to smile for no apparent goddamn reason <laughs> like <laughs> they wear glitter on their jeans I, I don't know so like that was a thing is like we didn't like i mean we did things that i thought were normal like yeah. and i talk about this in my act like when we were kids, because we didn't have a pool, because it got shut down, because two of my friends went on the high dive and fought on the high dive when we were in like fourth grade, and they broke their arms. 
because they fell off the and hit their arms. Joe and Nate were fighting over a girl named Mindy, and this was in fourth grade. But this was very so they shut down the pool. So that we, leads uh, real quick to John's further point about Toby's and um, the other people he's speaking of. I think every Mindy might be a problem. <laughs> they might call it because I know a Mindy, and boy does she fucking cause me some problems sometimes. <laughs> well, we're, yeah, your ex-wife is that your ex-wife? No, I mean n- not wife, but definitely ex something. Ex something. She's probably watching this right now. <laughs> we see you. <laughs> I know another Mindy. Growing up, she was like a punk rock, like a sharp skinhead, right? Like a like the anti-racist punk rock, like yeah, that's skinheads. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they, uh, she was a maniac too. She was a that, that those are the only Mindys I know. Both maniacs. Yeah, Mindy. Actually, our Mindy was a sweetheart. She became like a nurse or something. Mm. And she was like, so she was the, because she grew up so. We were the kids from the trailer park. That's right. how, how I grew up. I, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it, it, these stories that you're telling don't come from the kid that grew up in the nice home, Davey. Like, <laughs> like, they only had trailer homes where you grew up. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, we... Uh, like yeah, we we did normal kid stuff. Like yeah. we we made pipe bombs across over at the field. For sure. Yeah, we blew up mailboxes. I did all that. Yeah. I I was born uh, I was born right up the street here. Oh, okay. But my parents lived out way out on the western side of Wyandotte, and they lived in a trailer park when I was born. Oh. And then we only they they still live in the same house now, but they only got the house because mm. my grandparents kind of like. Like they also lived there, so yeah. like my grandparents had half this house, and we lived on the other half it's of like this a big poor, ranch. Poor man's like New York City when they gift them the apartment or whatever. Yeah, you... sort of. They just sort of like my parents were paying for the house, but my grandparents were like, "We'll put our name on the note for you and help out to get you started." But then I'll, after that, it's on you guys. Like, oh, you that's know? awful nice of them, man. Yeah, it was, but I'm sure there was some fuckery about my family's. Notorious, like, you know, oh. for me to get this owls in my inheritance was quite the struggle. Oh, <laughs> they really, <laughs> my, my aunt, uncle, and my father seem to be real concerned about how much money they're making off of my dead grandma's stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> seems to be the trend, I guess, when people die, you know. Well, not to, to not to go through family therapy with you, but like, I just another. Fun little Grant County fact: the the guy that everybody looked up to in my county was he did his first stunt there, and he was a salesman. He was a car salesman. Was oh, evil, yeah. Was he, evil Knievel? Right. Yeah. He's from Moses Lake, which was like twenty minutes from where I grew. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we we have a lot of we had the first school shooting. Sick law first. But yeah, nineteen ninety four Barry Lukaitis. Yeah. Uh, before Columbine. Uh, we uh, but see that's I mean technically wouldn't the isn't the first school school shooting in like it wasn't wait it was in Washington right yeah was that Kent Washington no that was Moses Lake okay but yeah. wasn't there one in the sixties on a college I we don't count that because oh, okay <laughs> that was a different situation yeah that's you're talking col- about going into school. Yeah, where the, all their hopes end after high school. Yeah. I'm not talking about people that are f- studying philosophy, uh, you know, fighting against the war. It was just a kid that was uh, a nerd and got bullied, I guess. I don't uh, I Love knew, I'm sure they said that he loved Satan when it happened. No. They probably blamed that. Oh, well, we, you know, so that, that was, that was a, like, we thought every kid. That played like because I beat the shit out of this kid, and when I was a junior in high school, because he played Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. You know, uh, he said he was gonna cast a spell on me, so I uh, punched him in the face during badminton, and I wasn't even in the class. I just left my other class to go beat him up with a badminton racket. Yeah, oh, that's. I mean, that's acceptable. Yeah. He threatened you with magic. <laughs> Jesus Christ, nobody tell Davey that we're going to do a Dungeons and Dragons stream over here real quick. Don't tune into that one, Davey. I don't want you to beat me up next time I see you. I'll just show up. I'll just, yeah, we're in the middle of having a and d stream, and Davey just breaks in through my garage door with a fucking racket. Like, I told you guys, cut this shit out. My dad was proud of me, though. Yeah. The, my dad was very proud of me. Uh, what did your parents do? 
Uh, my mom was actually. Um, uh, oh, I guess real quick, not to cut you off. Uh, welcome back. Uh, you know, I never know how to start these things, but this is. Uh, like yeah, 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 all those things. <laughs> Fuck that right now. Uh, we'll do that at the end. But this is uh, with me today. <laughs> I'm seeing YouTube. All right. Yeah. <laughs> with me today is a stand up comic, a friend of a friend of the show, John Schieser. Yeah. Uh, Davey Wester. Thanks for coming, Davey. Yeah, but now no. tell me what the fuck your wild ass pair. I feel like your dad was a wild guy. Yeah, he uh, met <laughs> my dad. <laughs> Well, That's yeah. John in the background yeah, that you can hear. <laughs> <laughs> my dad was definitely a character. Um, he, my parents, he, I'll, I'll start with their love story. Uh, my, this is how um, my dad met my mom. Was He was in Fairmont because he, I guess his dad lived in Minnesota. I've never met my grandpa on my dad's side. Um, but they met at a Chippendales and Fairmont are like where they have the dudes come out. And, yeah. And so my dad like met her because he's like chicks are horny after Chippendales and they hooked up after that, I think maybe in a bathroom. Have you ever wondered to yourself, just for thought, that like maybe your dad was performing at the Chippendales? No, no, my dad was not. Uh, no, my dad would tell me like when I was like nine or ten. Yeah. If he's like, if you ever get hard up, just go out like look for a Chippendales because then none of those chicks leave with the Chippendale dancers. Wait, well, because they're all gay. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, so. Now, That's not a very straight man thing to do, I don't think. I well, think that, like, be a Chippendales dancer. Yeah, no, it isn't. But yeah. my, my, my dad was like, just hang out there. Like, you act like you really like it, and they're horny, and you're the, the only dude that's in there that wants to sign it. That this was like, yeah, this was my... And then John had actually, our buddy John had actually met my dad once and uh, when he was alive, and John was tripping out about a story my dad told him so my dad like back in the day you used to rent cars yeah but you could only keep it in the state right yeah and my dad just basically he had the car and drove it all the way to san diego and then when they found him they never found him with the car but he just decided to drive taxi and in john's middle class mind is like so you basically did grand theft auto like, yeah, but my dad's like, oh, I didn't look at it like that. Like, but the- I mean, is that's probably not technically grand theft. I'm a bit, I'm pretty versed in the law. I, I spent some time being a no. wild boy myself, so I have a few uh, convictions under my belt. But uh, <laughs> no, so, I don't so think that's you technically very good at it. Like, you no, I, well, I I only have one real like I have a few possession charges that I was like you can you can that's just money right you throw a little money yeah. at that and get rid of that I only have one I have a 10 year stretch one conviction I retired with what I consider a winning record Oh okay all right yes I I have a really good winning record not yeah. to throw with that out there Yeah um uh because it's like some of the statues of limitations on Nothing bad, just maybe a little arson charge that could have happened Oh yeah a little yeah. arson I um, I might have blown a car up or two for yeah. insurance reasons. Oh, I okay. for people. I might have I well I got arrested for aggravated robbery. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's not I was more into the white collar stuff. Yeah, no, I was robbing drug dealers at one point, so that was And then I robbed a white one. And then boy, that and so he was undercover. That's how you got busted. No, no, he just called the police. <laughs> <laughs> he got robbed. Some might say technically kidnapped, but I don't know. It well, didn't really fall under the kidnapping like, limitation. Mm-hmm. I didn't like snatch the dude. We sort of invited him over to a friendly place and like. Oh, like a Dairy Queen? No, like someone's like, house <laughs> that he was gone to before. But, you know, it involved like a, a light beating. A light beating, okay. a little intimidation, a few slaps. So, how did you get into Dungeons and Dragons? If you're into that, oh well, I mean that had nothing to do. That was just you know, I, I uh, the Dungeons and Dragons is the thing that we're gonna do here. But I've always been into like nerd shit since I was a kid, like comic books and art and music and shit like that. But like, also, I just sort of like. Uh, I'm just curious. Like, so, like, it all started, like, I never smoked weed till I was, like, 21. 
Oh, you're one but of those. But I street raced. I was, I've always been into cars, too. So I was, like, big into street racing, uh, building cars, did that. Uh, went to school, learned how to do body work. And prior to that, I sort of dabbled around with stuff because I went to school when I was 22. Um, came back from school, was working. Uh, had a buddy of mine that would, like, get me weed. Oh, okay. And then, like, he lived in the hood. It's my, uh, it's like my big brother, Gerald Sparkman. And Gerald and his wife, um, I go get like a 30 sack of like shit weed at the time. Like, yep. nobody's smoking good weed back then. This isn't like, did you know, you, did 2003. You, did you ever, like, we, I had this buddy when we were in eighth grade and stuff like that. We'd always try to get high, but he would, like, we were so young and dumb. This guy was a hustler. He would sell us a rag, you know? Oh, he's smart. I was not. <laughs> at that time, I wasn't like, I watched my sister be all fucked up when I was a teenager. I, I drank like two times before I was like 18. Oh, and damn. both times it ended miserably. I was like peeing on people's mom's rugs and stuff in the middle of their house. Like I was a, I was a punk rock nuisance. Like I, I didn't need any of, I didn't need drugs or alcohol to be a fucking maniac because yeah. I was doing that. I was already like destroy destroying the world around me without anything, but I I just me being me and talking shit. I it went from my buddy getting the weed to then like he it, I wanted more weed, and then eventually it was like, hey, you're gonna just go in with me today into this drug house like right down the road here, and I went in and I cracked jokes on everyone that walked in the door to buy drugs. And I was just like fucking talking shit like I do. And as we were leaving, the the two guys who are now still my really good friends, mm -hmm. they were like, "Hey, you you don't have to come with Gerald. You can you're you can come over here and hang out on your own." So I just started fucking hanging out all the time. And uh, you know, I was this white dude with like a pompadour that listened to rockabilly music and built cars. But then I'm like sitting around all these dudes that hustle for a living, learning and. From there, I was like, one day I was like, hey, can you guys get some Molly? And they were like, yeah, what do you want that for? I was like, oh, you know, just a thing. And they're like, how many do you want? I was like, 50. So I bought 50 Molly pills for like a dollar a piece. And then I took them and sold them down in Westport. And then I started doing that. And then one thing led to another. Next thing I knew, I was like middlemanning drug deals. And then people were hiring me to like collect money for them and like, Things just got fucking crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah, see, I never did. I, I never... See, we just went from weed to meth where I was from. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, that's where it ended up. I did... Ad, that's why. That's how I got busted was somebody gave me Adderall one time and they're... Oh, that's the fancy... I'm talking... Yeah, no, no. It led to that because I never do an upper. I never even did coke and somebody's uh, nurse wife said, hey, you should take this. You would probably you probably should be prescribed it. So I thought, that, well, that was okay then. So I took this that day and then next thing you know i'm doing three thirties a day yeah then i'm like getting cocaine because i had like the primo cocaine connection and then sometimes you buy a bag of coke and it would be like i we'd call it spicy it was just shitty meth you know what i mean and then sometimes you just so, bought meth <laughs> yeah so the meth like when i was a kid like i don't know so i knew uh, we did the good american meth yeah the, like the orange meth yeah the crank yeah like, yeah so that's how uh yeah, um, I mean, there's, but it's fun because you don't know if it's, it was like you would hang out with people that would like give you a Wikipedia on meth, even though, yeah. you, even if you didn't know, if it, if it was just like, it was like a Jeopardy. Right. Like, but even if you didn't know the answers were right, it, they sounded right. Like yeah. you had the name, they would be like, you know why it's called crank, right? I'm like, no. Like, uh, uh, they'd be like, cause the bikers used to put it in their crankshaft. And like, yeah. uh, like, like, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, that, that, that made sense to me. I was like, oh, that makes sense. So I had like people and like, you know, cause I, I had like, like my neighbor used to like, I do a joke about that where my neighbor used to make meth to support his heroin habit. Yeah. And, and he was my next door neighbor. And my, like. Back to my dad. My dad got into one time. My dad, well, my dad got drunk, and like my dad, when he got drunk, he liked to take his tools out of his shed and put a big tent in the yard to air out his tools. Mm. Uh, like it was a real thing where I don't know. And one time we were coming back, and uh, he got into it. 
I come up with my buddy Joe. He Joe's dropping me off. He's like, "Why does your dad? He, my dad's over there with a tire iron in his hand because Jeremy Power, uh, Jeremy had just fired off some fireworks at my dad's tent where he had all his tools. Yeah, and my dad was waiting for him to like let off some more fireworks <laughs> to see if he was gonna hit my dad's tent. And I was like, "What are you doing, Dad?" I was like, "Uh." uh and he's like, well, Jeremy hit my tent with all my tools, which made no sense to me at the time or still yeah. doesn't. Like, I was, right. like, I was about 17. And like, I'd seen my dad do wild shit before. Um, I'm like, Dad, you know he's a big-time tweaker. He's like, I, I don't care what he does in his personal life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just concerned about what he does when mm. I'm around. <laughs> yeah, my tools. Like, <laughs> like, So that was because that was... I mean, everybody, that was the, like, it was, I thought I was just, because I would meet other people from other small towns. Uh, it's uh, even like our, my buddy John, who's been to small towns, and I've taken people from Shepherdsville, Kentucky there. And he's like, this is, because we, we, so I don't know if you guys do this out here, but our roads, we do roads that say 4.3. Instead of like they don't have names, they have like four point three, four point two. No, that's like country shit. But they're usually out here in Kansas. I think all the country roads are in the county. Well, there's like County Road, you know, like County Road thirty two. But all, all the country roads are like alphabet, so it's like A B C D E F G. Yeah. And then they it gets weird because they're like realize like oh fuck we built too many roads and then yeah. it's like now we're on double A double B double C and yeah. then it gets real can fuck confusing when well you gotta take A and then you take a left on double A it's like wait what the fuck man so, to you it's like to us that's like where I grew up that's normal yeah like it's just a normal like I mean like one of my favorite like you know, and like I said I have cerebral palsy but one of my friends when I was like. Growing up, she didn't like. She came to a show I did during COVID because it's like I said, we're like you. You think of Washington lockdown, and we we had about 120 people, 150 people at the gorge in the height of COVID in this little hotel lobby where people in Seattle would come in with masks, freaking out because they'd see all these people with cowboy hats and. And then yeah. they, they couldn't do anything because I had the deputy sheriff. I went to school. I got in fight with this guy, Sage, at a Halloween party. Uh, Sage. Yeah, Sage. He's a sta the, like a state patrol. We're friends now. We were just like. But I feel like that he has the name of someone from Seattle. Yeah, pretty much at yeah. the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very Seattle sounding name right there. Well, I I mean, like I have a like. Was his sister's fucking name Nog Champa? No, I don't know. No, I didn't know. It's just, but we, I mean, we have unusual names too. Right. Like my buddy, I thought this was a normal name. I have a, like, and John would look at me when I introduced him to John was my buddy Trampus. I have a buddy named Tramp Trampus. That's a, yeah, that's, that's standard name. <laughs> like, Shaw Dog, yeah, shout out to him. But. I date a few, tra I think I've, I, I've, I don't think I know I've dated a few Trampuses in my time. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's like I mean, the horror of Christmas. I mean, we, 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 we done some like, like you go to our, like, it's not, it's not a bad place. It just, people know of all the crazy shit that has gone on three states away all the way to Montana. Yeah. Like, Cause I like when I was in Billings and I told some lady that I'm from Washington, she goes, you're not one of them Starbucks drinkers. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a real thing. I was like, no, no, no. I'm from the Eastern part. Oh, you're all right. Yeah. Like, is it they're accepting? Cause they know we're just like them. Like, I mean, we had the first capital like incident in the seventies. Like, yeah. dude, like th this is, I'm not, so a guy tried to outrun the, like he crashed a helicopter into the white house, tried to in the seventies, you could Wikipedia that. Yeah. Like, the, Again, I mean, for sure, none of these things are surprising when we started off with, I grew up in a town full of militias. <laughs> like, <laughs> what's that movie, uh, The Green Room? Isn't that movie about, like, Eastern Washington, where those that punk rock band 
they go to play at this neo-Nazi militia house, and then they like fucking stumble upon a murder, and it's like, oh fuck, what <laughs> yeah. are we doing here? Yeah, it's not. I, I hate to say we we just like we and we don't even like we didn't even know what neo-Nazis were. We we we. I mean, we had this guy named Jorge, Mexican dude. Yeah, and we. We like he was kind of slow, but we tricked him anytime we saw him. Like he would ride his bike, he would do Hail Hitler on his bike. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that, that's but that was like we were just playing, like we didn't know you didn't were, know what you were doing, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, was, yeah. it was, uh, um, and we did, uh, like, like I said, like. They weren't real hip to cerebral palsy. So, like, what I was saying, when my friend that had known me since fourth grade, when she came to that show that we were doing, she yeah. didn't realize I had cerebral palsy until I did that show. And she goes, oh, I thought you just didn't tie your shoes correctly. Yeah. That, that's how that – and her old man, yeah. her dad came up to me. Who's oh, the, we thought – we all assumed that your mom just drank a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, shit like that. Yeah. Like <laughs> – yeah, I know the kind of people you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, her dad came up to me, and he's known me since I was a kid, and this is how he like talked to me was, oh, yeah, I see you still walk the same way. And that was a, his, hey, how you doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's, a, that's, that's a very country guy. I, I, I grew up around people like that. They're like, oh, you're still fucking fat, you know, when I was a kid. <laughs> like, oh, look, you're still a fat bastard. <laughs> now they see me, like, people see me all the time now because I did used to be a real fat bastard, and they go, and they squint their eyes and they look at me. It happened at the ship on Wednesday night. This guy I've known, he's a real shitty dude. Uh, but he's like sitting there staring at me. He's like, and I'm like, hello, Tony. And he's like, do I know you? I'm like, yeah, you fucking fat moron. It's Tyler. He's like, oh, shit, I didn't recognize you. Like, okay. Then, well, yeah, and then they automatically, now they think you're on meth again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there are people that do think I've been on drugs. It's like, no, I'm just a vegan. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, I don't know. We got to end this interview now. Yeah, oh, shit. <laughs> like, what? Oh, fuck. Joke's on you. I'm one of them Seattle people. <laughs> no, I had a heart attack a few years ago, so I, like, just did it for my health. Fuck They you. recommended it. No, I, like, you just keep doing it. Like, you'll be fine. You just built up your tolerance. No, it doesn't work like that, obviously. <laughs> I thought it did. Apparently, uh, when it comes to heart disease, it there is, you can't eat that much salt. I looked at this package today that was like this vegan gravy mix at this restaurant, and I was like, oh, fuck, that might be cool to do, right? Like, whatever, I'll try it out. And then I looked on the back. The salt in the package was 7,500 milligrams. And I said, how are you... Who the fuck can eat this? That's like a fucking jar. It, the whole thing was salt. It had well, to be. I'm who's like, gonna eat it anyway? Because it says dude, lots of people. Gravy. <laughs> dude, you'd that's be surprised. All, that's, you'd be you're surprised about the salt content. I literally. I, I'm like just trying to come <laughs> vegan gravy. Like vegan gravy, dude. Yeah. Mushroom gravy. That's where it's at. Yeah, yeah well, I can do some mushrooms. I like. I I've, I've now officially. Um, I will now officially only go to Lucky Boys and get food when John is is fucking cooking because everybody else, they like, John knows to like, hey, uh, the vegan burger, you don't have to smash it like a hamburger and everybody else doesn't do that. So for about 10 minutes, my kid and I have to stare at the two hamburgers and go, well, one of these is real meat and one of them isn't. And now we don't know. And there's a couple times where I'm pretty sure I just got a regular hamburger and, like, didn't fucking realize it, you know? Yeah, because you lost all your taste buds when you went vegan, like, in my head. like you know, No, I, not really. You know, I... It's I, not that bad. You know, I, like, I've been to... I, like, listen... I've Dude, been, I had Down syndrome before I went vegan. <laughs> <laughs> it, cur it cured it. Well, no, it did <laughs> You no. might cure your cerebral palsy, dude. You never know. <laughs> no, that's not how. It's oh, not how it works. <laughs> no, no. I've been to your little fancy restaurants before. Uh, well, I'm not that kind of vegan. Yeah, I've been to the veggie. There's like people that just eat for health, and then there's like, like because of certain things, right? Like I'm trying to like undo. Like all this fucked up shit that I did to my body, basically, because and it's all it's really like uh, 
it's like hereditary. It's like gene based, like the heart diseases. Oh. But um, there's also the other people because like I tell people and they think I'm like some like fucking weirdo like uh, PETA advocate that you know is, no, is non-binary I, or something. And I'm like, no, I'm I'm actually don't give a fuck about any of those things. See, I just put it all under one umbrella because I'm a progressive thinker. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm, I'm a, like I'm just like. I don't know. I, I, I think, yeah, I don't think, uh, like some say you might be the most progressive man in your town. Mm. Oh, I'm the nicest person. <laughs> I'm the kindest. Like I'm like, now you still live there, right? Like, no, in, no, I go back there. Um, where, where are you? Where are you stationed out of now? Uh, I guess I'm in Minnesota with my mom, visiting, okay. visiting her. But I'm going to Austin. I, I go around. You just I, kind of travel around. Yeah, I lived in Kentucky for five years, just because I wanted to live in a county like a state like my county. Yeah, to, to, just to check it off my list. And like a lot of my friends have lived in Kentucky before. Uh, just not Louisville, just random little towns that you've never heard of. Right, and, right, right. And, and people just move there and like. Um, I mean, it, it's a weird, like, like, I don't know if we could ever have, uh, maybe we do, but like, um, I don't think we could ever have a vegan restaurant in my town because like people got, so they, we had this old restaurant and then the people bought it, um, uh, Barb and Ed's. It was a like just popular little spot. Little mom and pop, yeah, old style country restaurant. Yeah, just burgers and stuff, right? Yeah. But, so you wouldn't go there because they don't serve your shit. Um, I'd get, I'd go with you. I'd just get fries. Let me get the fries. Yeah, no, the fries aren't. Uh, like I, some people like barber and fries. I like the onion rings. Um, uh, they, so when they first opened up, uh, like people were upset at them because. They didn't keep it. Now they do because they got phone calls about because uh, they used to give free ice cream. Oh, shit. Yeah, little cups of ice cream after yeah. you finished or whatever. And people were upset that they weren't offering free cups of ice cream like they were in the 90s and 80s. And I'm like, it's a new owner. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, Barb and Ed are actually, Barb and Ed died, guys. And yeah, the free like, ice cream went with them. No, but they brought Joke's on you. That ice cream, they bought it one time in 1976. <laughs> and we're still serving it to all of you. <laughs> like, so they, but they brought it back because they, they got a big backlash on it. Like, yeah. Uh, so like protests in small towns, amongst small town businesses, they work. The big protest, like, like some people, like, like I didn't care. Like when people were protesting Bud Light, because I don't yeah. care what you want to do. It doesn't affect. Like the funny thing is, like during that whole thing, my ex girlfriend took me to a drag queen um, drag bing- show. Yeah, uh, a bingo. Okay. Uh, and uh, like, and I'm the only one in there at that time. And this is when it was all going down. Was they were all. Drinking IPAs and shit, and I'm the only one drinking Bud Light. And I heard one drag queen go, "Who would ever drink fucking Bud Light?" Like, and I'm the only one drinking yeah. Bud Light. Like, so I thought that <laughs> that was weird that everybody like I didn't really care. Like, you want to look at me like you don't support trans people, obviously. <laughs> Maybe, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, well, no, they make you because when you do that. Um, they make you when you do go to a drag queen event. They want to know, like for some reason, the like. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, when they like, when they're like, any straight people, my hand that went up super fast because yeah. I wanted to make sure everybody knew knew that you were straight. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like I knew how gay people felt about announcing it because I was like, oh, I better announce this uh, in my head. That's yeah. how fast I I'm was. coming out as straight in this gay environment. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. 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 yeah, but even so, like you were like, you know, you could go to the gay bar just like going to Chippendales. Yeah. Back that, in the day, if you went to the gay bar, it only took one gay dude to find out that you were straight. Yeah. Then the next thing you know, you'd have every straight lady be bringing every straight lady yeah. in the bar over to you. Yeah. You know. Or I mean? the all the 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 gay dudes that have their dream was to turn a straight dude. Yeah. I've seen that. You like, have to fight them off. 
Yeah, but that's fine. No, no, don't fight them off. Just get the free beer. Like, be that fake chick with the the push up bra at the bar. That oh yeah, and that's how I that's how I approached it. Like yeah, you, you know, that's not a bad approach. Yeah, because you you have all those. But you just gotta be careful. You gotta make sure they don't slip. See here, like in this town, you're liable to uh, black out, wake up the next day with a sore asshole because no, you got so, drugged the, no, yeah, and drug out of the bar. Well, I don't like. Yeah, I don't do open. I I make sure if I, I get bottled drinks. Yeah, and that's it. That I and then know you it, hold it. Yeah, that's what I with do. the thumb over the top. Yeah, yeah that, I do that wherever I go. Yeah, um, that's an Eastern Washington guy thing. I think. Yeah, well, we that's just, country guy thing. We don't trust people. Right. Like you know, might the government might come in and kidnap me or something. Yeah, that's a valid. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, that's a valid. That's a valid uh that's right. a valid worry in, in that part of the country. Again, yeah. referring back to the militias. At any well, point the government was going to raid someone. Like, well, that's more You I'm get a, five guys with guns on a farm out there with a with their own flag <laughs> <laughs> dressed in camouflage. So yeah, do you know that, that Eastern Washington has tried to secede from Western Washington since eighteen sixty one? And damn, I wonder why they haven't succeeded. Because like they won't let us, but we saw uh, my dad signed the petition, so we haven't been. And the, this is the crazy thing: we weren't a state till 1889. That's, yeah, that's how long. I don't mean to give you the history of Eastern. No, Island. I like it. Uh, like like we were big. Uh, we're all of us were big Randy Weaver supporters. Yeah, uh, and you remember that Ruby Ridge? Yeah, yeah. So that that was like that was a big deal where I was from. Um, yeah, yeah. Mer- some call American hero. Yeah, Randy. Yeah. We- Randy. Actually, that was a really fucked up deal, and the government did just like straight up murder his wife and yeah, that several was- other people for no reason. Yeah, well, and then going back to what, like you can't find it on YouTube or anywhere now, but I remember being a kid, like the news story changed every day. Yeah, about what he, why they were going. They, one of them, I remember, they were saying that he was a bank robber. Yeah, they, and it was all had something to do with like they were trying a to, shotgun. Well, so they were trying to infiltrate the Butler compound. Yeah, but which was, was, was the actual uh, compound. militia. The, like, the, well, they were the neo, like the, the full on uh, neo Nazi, yeah. like. People, yeah, he was an old. They're out there on the fourth Reich. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, how they got shot down, shut down was they shot it at a biracial family because they dropped the teddy bear, like outside of the their kid dropped something. Yeah, and then you had a bunch of neo Nazis shoot at them with AR 15s as they were. Oh shit! Yeah, that's how the they they got shut down. Um, yeah, I, like that's how old I, I remember that being open. Um, yeah, when I was in college, uh. Old Fred Phelps was hiding out at this neo-Nazi compound outside of Laramie, Wyoming. Yeah. There was a bunch of the same type. That place was very similar. Oh, yeah. Laramie. It was weird because there was like an automotive college and the University of Wyoming there. Yeah. But you could get the vibe. It had the vibe of like, you knew like there was like old, there was bars from the old West there. Yeah. And shit to where it's like, yo, this is an old ass like it was still a wild Wyoming's a very wild place. But that's here's the funny thing. So I did a show in Gillette, Wyoming. Yeah. And they were like, "Be careful. Laramie is very liberal." Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and they call it liberal. And I'm out there going, "Jesus Christ, this place is crazy." Yeah, you know yeah, I, mean? I was like, "I don't know if this is like, you know." There's a band from there, this punk band, Teenage Bottle Rocket. That guy worked at like the skate shop. He was cool. Oh, and they're like a really big band, but oh. It was. I worked at the Hastings. Maybe that's why they think it's a liberal place because of the punk rock band. Yeah, there's like one punk rock. There's <laughs> goddamn queer down there, man. And l- I just came up with a new word the other day for like uh, all the like I some people call them neoliberals, whatever you want to call them. Like all the crazy leftists that scream about everything. Yeah. I, I'm now referring to them as NBNs. Oh, okay. Non-binary Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it seemed like the most fitting thing because they're all social. They're technically they are Nazis. Yeah. And they're all fascists. And I just thought, well, I guess we'll just add the non-binary at the beginning, and we got it covered. Well, and that's the weird like, um, 
it's a weird dynamic in in this world because um like because where I started comedy w- w- was a place that you wouldn't think I started comedy. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm a st- comedy store comic. Right. But I started at a club called Mixed Nuts off of Crenshaw and 10th and Washington. Okay. And, like, you, the guy, Benet, the, who owned it, was a, like, you know, an African from Nigeria. Really nice guy. Uh, but he would do promotions. Like, you would go in there. You had Nation of Islam as security. And he would do promotions because that was a blood neighborhood so that you would see, like, everybody dressed in red. Right. They, and it was like, it was, a, it was like, so you got to, like, so I interacted with them more than Hollywood people. I had more in common with them. Right. Than actual middle class white people. Poor people are poor people, dude. Yeah. Like, we all kind of, like, if you grew up in not the best environment, then you kind of but, uh, but understand other, like, race or color had nothing to do yeah. with it because it's all the same shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And. We're like, all drinking Vest Soda, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> we had to drink Vest Soda, you know? We didn't have fucking Coca-Cola. Yeah, it was like... Uh, or Select, because I had mm-hmm. Safeway. Safe yep. Select. We had Best Choice. <laughs> okay, that so... Was, that was the grocery store brand. <laughs> what? God damn this fucking... My neighbor's got this pit bull man yeah and for some reason they decided it was a good idea to put it on a lead out front and that fucker's out there all the time just yapping its head off on a, a leash this big oh and it just it's he's going to snap it and just obliterate somebody see i don't day. understand people like you like this is like you have a little dog right yeah and, and you have a little yard so like when i'm not trying to i've always thought that you get a dog the size of your yard like that's that's how i've like that's how i was raised like we had a small yard so we had a welsh corgi right and see i i'm okay with whatever size dog you have but you can't have that dog tied up on a leash that, that, that you can't what? have any dog tied up on a leash this long i have a lead in the backyard yeah Cause I got a decent sized backyard where he can run around a little, but really you have to walk. Like most people just walk their dogs yeah. out here. Like a few of the neighbors have fenced in yards in the back, but still it's like, yeah, it, that dog never, it's like, you know, that dog never, it's just like they're in prison. When I'm yeah. walking my dog, it's like, oh man, I bet these dogs would be like cool to, you know, yeah, they could like get a little interaction in, you know what I mean? Like, because he's a fucking maniac for like five seconds, yeah. And then if if you would have like stood there and let him like do his thing, and then two seconds later he'd be like going barking at you a different way to get because he wants you to pet him now. Like, see, he's like, very yeah. aggressive. So yeah, when you like so, um, like your dog when your dog attacked me, it wasn't nothing. Yeah. Uh, my buddy has a like he, where I grew up. He has like one of them. Uh, forget not th- the aggressive version of uh, the military dogs. I forget like the oh, German bo- Shepherd or Doberman the, Pinscher. No, the not the German Shepherd breed, but they're bigger than the German. Yeah. Head, like and like anytime I come up to his house, he's like, and he's like, yeah. He talks to me. Yeah, that's my service dog. But like, that dog looks like. Every time, there's no service except you want people to, this dog will bite off every... Yeah, just die. <laughs> this like, dude just almost to kill people. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, man, like, yeah, so I've just seen that, like, um, forget. But yeah, he, but I found it funny that this dog was so aggressive, but the reason they got rid of him in the military... Because he wasn't mean enough. I'm like, I think that dog is mean enough. I don't even, I'm like, I'll call my buddy Dormeyer. I'm like, I'm coming up to your property. Make sure that Satan or whatever the dog's name is. Uh, is Wait, ch- and what's his name? I just call him Satan. I don't. No, 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 no. Not your, the dog's name wasn't uh, the crazy part. <laughs> what was, what's your friend's name? Dormeyer. Dormeyer. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Trampus and Dormeyer. Yeah. That sounds like a shipping company. 
Yeah, I mean, his brother got tased by the police till he peed himself. It was a good time. That's, yeah, that's a good story. <laughs> like, and now, is this guy in eastern Washington, too? Oh, yeah. All my uh, friends are like... Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what year did you start... What, what year were you like, well, I'm going to go do comedy? I never... So, I wasn't one of the... So I drank a lot, like I just, me, we just, I just, me and my buddy Nate just got evicted to, from our apartment in Ephrata because we tore down the wall at the middle of the night. Okay. We, did, we, we thought we could hang drywall. Yeah. Because we were partying. We're like, you know what would be fun was to hang some drywall. Like, you ever been to a party and like want to hang some drywall? No, no, I, I never went to a party and was like, you know what we could do, boys, is a little construction work tonight. <laughs> so you were on meth, you guys decided to rip down the walls. No, we weren't messing uh, out, we are just, this was a, like, uh, I don't know, we were just, when we drank, we liked to do some shit, like uh, his brother, my brother, my best friend's brother got mad at me and th- like took a pizza one time, Aaron took, and John had met Aaron. Aaron scared him because the first time he had ever met Aaron, Aaron had just been stabbed in the forehead like six times or something. Oh, shit. Yeah, and he just had a bandana. And John, like, this is his first interaction. And, like, it it wasn't the fact that Aaron got stabbed in the forehead. It was our, like, oh, he got stabbed, and we just kept drinking a beer, and he came over with a bandana on, and we were just like, this is a normal Tuesday. Yeah. Like, like, (laughs) yeah, he or the bandana was like... The suture it. for the wounds. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, okay. <laughs> that, yeah. that, so he got stabbed in the head. And was like, well, fuck it. I'll put this bandana on. Go get drunk. Yeah. Well, yeah. Aaron didn't really. It just. It was just that was our way. That's always been our. Like, one time I cut my hand open, and I didn't want to go to the doctor because I need some stitches. So what I did was I sterilized the butter knife on the on the on the stove. Yeah. And I basically burnt it on my hand to weld the the cut shut. Yeah. You know, put some alcohol, dip it, have a shot, and move on to save myself 60 bucks. Yeah, and no infection? No infection because you dumped the alcohol. Yeah. Like you're rubbing alcohol. I, uh, I filleted the whole end of my finger a little over a week ago and had to go get it glued back together. I thought I needed stitches. The whole... I mean, my finger, just the whole end of it was. Yeah, hanging. see, I like I went. They're like, yeah, you need stitches, and I was like, how much are you gonna cost? I think they it was like sixty bucks or something, and I was like, no, that's okay, I'll, I'll do it myself. I uh, I got this insurance now, so I really try to suck it for every fucking dollar I can. You know yeah, what I, mean? yeah. I have I have Medicare or whatever. Yeah, care, but I don't like using it, so I, I I'd rather just do it myself. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I would use that Medicare. That for, that's that good free shit. Yeah, well, no, not really. I, I don't know. I just I, if I could do it myself. I yeah. Mean, I mean, you didn't you, when you were a kid? Like one time, my dad made this kid a bow and arrow, right? He shot you with it. Yeah, in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> my, like we're playing cowboys and Indians, and I had a stick, and my dad was like, "Hey, you you need a real bow and arrow." So my dad made a real bow and arrow for this kid, and we were out there on the little like jungle gym and he was i was like like gun smoke i had my little stick as a gun and uh he shot me right there and bleeding my dad put a stake on it and stitched me right up in the living room yeah i mean i used to stitch myself up in the body shop from time to time with fishing line yeah. there's always some old body guy fishing line because you'd cut your hand yeah. and be like ah come over here you fucking idiot yeah, get nah. stitched up. Yeah, that's but the older I get, the more I'm like, yeah, I just fucking, I'll just use the insurance. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I don't know. I just... you know, I don't, I'm, I, there's things, you know, if you're not a body guy, you shouldn't be doing body work, and I'm not, I'm not a fucking doctor, so I'll, I'll go talk to them about it. But <laughs> sometimes I do question the people that are doctors. You oh know? yeah, that's, that's... what the fuck do you know what you're doing? Sometimes I wonder what were your grades like. Yeah. How much t- attention did you pay in medical school? <laughs> yeah. Because you know that you get some doctors that just pass by. Like, yeah. It's like, like getting that lawyer that just barely wheezed through. Like a good public. Yeah. That's a public defender. Like, yeah. There are some good public defenders, but yeah. You get you get that lawyer where you're like, it's like, well, what do you. 
You know, I had a buddy that always told me, Dan actually would tell me that if uh, if you talk to a lawyer, he's like, oh, I'll definitely get you right off for this. And that, that's the guy you just walk away from because he's full of shit. He's yeah. just going to take your money. Yeah. No, my, like, yeah, my buddy, my, my, he's doing good now. But my buddy did like, uh, I think he did three years federal. Oh, uh, yeah. Cause he ripped him and he ripped off Job Corps for a, a chunk of money. Yeah, and that's a good job. It's like he did, but his uh, his public defender basically. Oh yeah, you're gonna do whatever. Um, Get your probation. Yeah, but he ended up doing Next three, three years <laughs> maximum security. <laughs> fucking no. well, there's all good until we find out about this militia thing that you grew up in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just. Oh, it was like, yeah, he, he he played a joke. The guy's dead. So, like, um, the guy, his Sally in Federal. Yeah. Like, Shep, like, hey, this would be funny. Um, he was not only, he was, uh, like, he believed in, um, he was a neo-Nazi, and he was also into the Viking laws. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was... Mo- uh, at- and that's like the new age Nazi thing is they all got to be Viking dudes. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, and so we're sitting there and I'm like getting off the plane. I'm like, hey, I get to see my buddy Shep. And he's like, oh, yeah, my buddy Keegan. And he didn't tell me Keegan was a fucking maniac. When I get off the plane, I'm like, I'm, this guy's got a mohawk. He's got all the swat. I'm like, what? The I was the most uncomfortable ride. Yeah. Because we had to. Like, we had to stop and get something to eat. And those uh, people are always maniacs, so you can't be like, dude, what's with the fucking swastikas? Yeah, <laughs> like, because then it's just like, well, I got to get into a fist fight now. Yeah. We stopped at, I think, I still remember it because it was like traumatic for me. It was like, he's like, the, this Mexican dude was like, or Hispanic or whatever the correct term. The guy was, you know, A and W. All no, I was like, hey, can we? And the guy was like, and so Keegan starts screaming at him, like, one day it'll be a white land. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I just want my food. Like, yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> like, and then we had to listen to uh, white nationalist heavy rock all the oh way. Oh my God, uh, dude. Like, it was the most uh, uncomfortable uh, moment. I, I'm, I'm not one of those people. That's easily uncomfortable. Yeah. But this was probably one of the most. Uncom- He's dead now. Shep goes, Yeah, he murdered somebody. I'm like, Oh, yeah. I don't see any. But when I met him, I wasn't like, Hey, this guy's going to reform and get a regular job. Because- yeah, this is a real solid guy. I think he can turn it around. Yeah, like- like- <laughs> <laughs> no, he definitely killed someone and got murdered in the process. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he's just. Yeah, he was like. Because he's like. Because he's. Basically, in the ride, he's like, "Yeah, hey, you should come to a boast with me." I'm like, "What is this like?" Uh, like yeah. I'm like, no, "All right, yeah, cool, yeah, I'll cool. Be, uh, I'll, I'll get right on that one." Yeah. Hey, yeah. you want to come to this Nazi party? Oh yeah, give me the address. I'll meet you there. It was fun. Like when I graduated high school, so my family was on my mom's side, it's all biracial. So like you could see when I went to the. Uh, my high school, like you could see where my family was because my uncle's black. I have an Asian cousin, so all my family was like right there. You could see it because I yeah. didn't. I just like to look for people of different ethnicities. Yeah, but I was like, all right, that's where I'm. That's where I'm at. That's no. my people. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Okay, so y- you did the drunk drywall. Yeah. How did that night lead to the comedy? Oh, I'm sorry. I went on a little. No, run. you're all right. So I ended up, I was on downtime um, from, uh, I was going to go work at the Avon plant down in Pasadena. Yeah. And then I was like, um, I was like, fuck it, I'll go do comedy. And I sucked at it, but I knew I could be good at it. So yeah. I just, I kept doing it. And then uh first one I did was, first set I did actually was at the comedy store, but I was so bad and that the guy Rick Ramos made fun of me, and I kept coming back. But I was, but I, I put my time in because I would go do little coffee houses. But why, like mixed nuts is so important to me. Um, 
at the time is is a guy that only been doing it for a year or a couple months at the time of that full, first full year uh benet and all those guys like the hood clubs operated differently like they like oh we're gonna make you try to do 10 minutes we're gonna try to make you do 15 minutes it wasn't yeah, they were like, pushing you to to do more yeah so that's like instead of just sitting at a coffee house with my notebook and i could relate to that audience because i just i like yelling at people and uh uh, yeah, um, and you're kind of fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not fucked up. I'm in my head. Roddy Roddy Piper said to me once that I wasn't the crazy one. It was the rest of the world. So yeah, I, I've lived by that. Yeah, you know. So um, it was just so I just kept doing it, and uh, you know, I wasn't that good even when I got passed at the comedy store, but I was good enough. At the time, I could develop, and um, because when you're 20, 22, like like your opinions on stuff change, like you because uh, from where it is now. Because when I first did comedy, I did it as a vengeful thing, like look at me now, and then I went back and just told off my whole town. Yeah, (laughs) like like I didn't even do a set. Look at me, bitch! I did one minute (laughs) at an open mic. Mm -hmm. Fuck you guys. (laughs) Yeah, I did. I I tried to do thirty. Like I was just. But now, like, I go back, because my community, that, that's why I love my community so much, is because they support whatever I do, um, like, far as comedy. And they've, like, without that, because I, I, I have comic friends, but I, like, I, I personally, from my standpoint, I like to have more regular friends than comic friends. Right. Because it's more real than, like... I May mean, I tell you some of these comics? I've been, I got somehow I got uh, thanks to that guy. I've been sucked up into the world of local Kansas City comedy, and man, how much you enjoy that? You know, uh, <laughs> it, it, I, uh, they're, they're the most reliable, uh, uh, most consistent. Dude, they're people. they're so reliable. <laughs> they're the consistency of them is matched by no other trade um <laughs> the honesty is just untethered um the realness of them all is uh so wild and there's so many times where i've called john and i'm like jesus christ dude and he's like yeah it was a fucking bunch of comics and i'm yeah. like yeah it's not, i'm just not used to it you know and cool. just i've like you know i've i've learned how to uh, i'm learning how to wrangle them appropriately yeah so but the only people like to date that like, dude, I've talked to all kinds of fucking people. I've talked to men, women, mechanics. I've had people sit in this chair like that are terrified, right? The camera comes on and all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, oh my God. And then it's like, oh shit, like I got to figure out how to get you to talk like you do when it's just us. But um, the only people that have ever, after the fact, been like, "Hey, you need to, we, we you can't post that," have been stand-up <laughs> comics, and I'm just like, <laughs> "I'm like, ah, that ain't, <laughs> that ain't how this works, Jack. <laughs> Damage is done. No, I, I don't know what I said. I'm like, well, <laughs> you ought to pay a lot more attention when you speak. Like, <laughs> what, what, what could you have said? Like, you didn't. It's not like you said something racially motivated or anything. Like, yeah. you're just, you know. But I yeah, don't, I the don't comics are like so for me. I'm going to, like, we did uh, Kansas City Comedy Club. Yeah. And this is me patting myself on the back for a little bit because comics like to do that. Yeah. Um, I was, like, so proud of myself because I was nice to people. Yeah. And that's not my strongest suit. I was, like, I talk, turned to John. I go, I was, like, welcome. I shook people's hands. Yeah. I didn't insult anybody. Like, you like, you're... And John was like, I'm proud of you. Because he's been around me long enough to, yeah. like, like, I just. But again, it's like you said, with in, with age, you know what I mean? Well, it's, no, that's been my whole demeanor my whole yeah, life. Yeah, I know. But at a certain point, you're probably just like, yeah, fuck it. I, it's whatever. These people yeah. aren't trying to hurt me. Yeah, but you also grew up in a place where you were probably worried about, like, everyone you met. You had to be like, well, fuck, this guy's going to try to beat my ass or something. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, I, I 
I I mean, I was a bully to other like I got yeah. kicked out of Special Olympics. Yeah, because I was mean to the other crippled people. Yeah, and I mean that checks out. <laughs> like, there has to be. There's one in every group. You yeah, know? Like I was. Yeah, the, the rest of them lived in Seattle. You lived in. <laughs> yeah. When I was in Wyoming, the Special Olympics headquarters was in Cheyenne or in Laramie. Yeah. Because and I asked why, because it was always like a big deal at this automotive school I went to. You could, they were big on like doing public service and like helping out in the community. And one day I asked the people, I said, "Why is the you know?" Because being from here, you know what I mean. Yeah. I, I grew up in a metropolitan area, yeah. albeit on the outside of the main city. But I was like, it just you know talking to the people, it's like it's real odd that the Special Olympics would be based out of. Laramie. Out of Laramie. And she's like, oh, well, I'll explain that to you. And she told me that it was because per capita, there were more cases of incest in Wyoming and in the region around Wyoming that they had more people with uh, disabilities than anywhere else in the entire country. So they were like, well, we'll just put, we'll just... We'll just start that right here, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, I love Wyoming people. I yeah. Would, uh, no, it's just a weird thing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you fit right in in Wyoming, dude. I like, I like Wyoming. I, I mean, I, I, I had a great time. I'm, I mean, it's just like, I'm of course, hot. your fucking uh, town embraces you. Your the other heroes have been the Ruby Ridge guy, the the dude that flew a helicopter into the fucking White House, and the first school shooter. You're the only one who hasn't actively tried to kill people. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you look up Ephrata, they actually, on their Wikipedia page, they, on one of them, they have murder victim as one of the famous people. Yeah, <laughs> murder victim. <laughs> now it's just like, famous comedian. No, they Davey don't Wester. put me, because that gives people too much hope. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you still have time to fucking ruin it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're just waiting to catch that photo. I'm just going to superimpose you with a cup of Starbucks in your hand as, like, the fucking the shot of, the, like, the, the fucking thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, we don't, like, I, I don't know. It's it's weird that, like, 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 John, like, this is, like, there was a time... Like I said, I like I got into it with Gallagher. Yeah, uh, I threatened to stab him. I think probably most people did, from what I've heard about him. Oh yeah, but I was I I like to claim you probably would have stabbed Gallagher. Well, it was the I was the like so I, before the Mark Marin, I was the first dude that really stood up to Gallagher. Are you? Were you? Was this Gallagher or Gallagher too? No, this was Gallagher. Okay, this and, was and so I didn't really care. I've never cared like. John has seen me hit David Arquette with a bouquet full of roses while I was on stage. Yeah. Um, I'm not, like, I have anger issues, apparently. Yeah. Um, uh, I, and, uh, I was, but he was just upset. So, Dave, like, for Gallagher, he came up to me, because I tell stories. I don't really, I talk about my palsy, but I don't really involve it. Right. Because there's more to, to life than that, and that's just how I was raised, so... And he goes, you don't really talk about your palsy, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, no offense, dude. I grew up with Carlin and Richard Pryor. Those were my heroes. I never liked your comedy. And then I walked off. And because uh, I'm I'm a warm, cuddly person. Yeah. And uh, and then I was coming down the stairs. Now, if I know you and you make fun of my walk and I'm like, it's funny, it's whatever. But it was like he thought he could bully me. But he's like, I was like, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, I'm being you, because he started mocking my walk. I was like, and there was Tommy Morris and Jeff Scott were like, their eyes, because they knew me. Right. And, um, so uh, the the story gets exaggerated. So this is what really actually I said to Gallagher. Um, I said, man, listen. Um, and everybody had their camera phones off, so I calmed down, because I don't want to be on YouTube. Like, if I'm... So I told Gallagher, I said, listen, you do it again, I'm going to forget how old you are, and I'm going to beat the fuck out of you in this fucking this front of this patio. Like, f literally, and I'm going to, I do carry a knife with me. Don Barris is the one I did threaten to stab. Uh, me and Don are cool, but, like, um, so I had a, like, and then everybody's like, oh, shit, it's about to go down. 
well, we need to get a video of this. I'm like, no, I don't need, like, because I'm smart enough to know. I'm looking around. I'm like, oh, this shit is like, if I'm going to do something, it's not going to be on video. Right. Yeah, I don't need to go on YouTube for, like. Beating up Gallagher. Yeah, that's not, (laughs) that's not. I don't know. You might have championed you, dude. No. Also, Gallagher, like, dude, you just got beat up by the fucking. No, it, they they'd seen me punch other people. Oh yeah. So like, cause I, I was accustomed, just and I was just handling the shit. I mean, I was egging them on, like right. And, but you also come from a place where you like, yeah. That's what happened. Like, yeah. People fought about it. Yeah, and I was like, but after he sat down and be quiet, I would go stand up next to him. I'm like, hey. You got anything to say, motherfucker? You got anything to say? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's wait, it's waiting for him to say it. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, just like saying, he's like, nah. and then a bunch of comics had heard about it, like uh, Jeff Altman, and like Jeff Altman was one of them. Uh, he did, like, he, he was a, a famous comic, and he's been on some TV. And the other one was Mark Marin had heard about it yeah. too. Oh, I'm no, sorry. No, you're good. I'm just gonna. It, yeah. yeah, that cheap ass mic stand has a tendency to float up as we go along. Uh, Jeff Altman and Mark Marin basically said, "I waited 30 years to say that to Gallagher. It took you five minutes." Uh, like, cause I'm not, cause I like keep in mind I'd seen him bully people for the last four weeks. Oh Ooh, right, yeah. 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 I don't. One thing. I'm not a tough guy. Let's make that clear. But I don't. You're not gonna bully me at all because I wasn't. I was raised with a dad that worked at a potato processing plant. Yeah. And a mom that was in the military. So like she was in the National Guard. So like there. And in our family, we had no filter. And my dad, you know, like he, you know, my dad got. I mean, my dad stood up for me because I didn't like art class, and we didn't. So. One thing we didn't have that you have in other, even small towns I didn't know until this year, um, they have truancy officers. Oh, um, yeah. I'd never heard of that. Like, and like, what do you mean? Like, your town didn't have truancy officers? I'm like, no, we have too many people with guns. That, like, you're not going to tell people how to raise their kids where I'm yeah, from. Yeah, they didn't have CPS where you came from. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the other famous guy The guy that shot the CPS officer <laughs> On the list of famous people <laughs> So how long were you In Los Angeles doing comedy uh, Off and on for 16 years um, And I still go back Right um, um, uh, Like so Like It was just It's Even to this day um it, I'm, I don't say culture shock, but it was like, it was weird. Like, cause I thought when I first got into comedy, um, I was super happy. Like, like I thought all comics were friends. Cause I had never, see, I was different than most comics. I never grew up like watching comedy or like even wanting to be a comic right you just you kind of stumbled into it yeah it wasn't like people like how'd you get into comedy i'm like i don't know i just did like because my my whole life was planned out uh you know in my head like when i was 15 i was like screw it i'm just gonna go to lamb west end or jr simplot which is potato processing plant So, so i didn't really like so the entertainment, all that stuff wasn't my thing. Like, you know, yeah. And, and I had to adjust to that first time since John's here. Uh, I'll tell you the first time John, John had ever really met me was he saw me drink a gallon of whiskey uh, and fight a tree and a party uh, and like with overalls on. Uh, and, and this is in Los Angeles. Yeah. 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 And then they told me I couldn't have any more drinks. And John was watching me take drinks out of people's hand saying, what are you going to do, pussy? Uh, like that was, that was my whole thing. I told one dude, I took it. I remember that. I took his drink out of his hand and I told him he had small hands, yeah. uh, like just very, very embraceive. And then John, John goes, uh, and then I fell, I went to sleep in the bushes, I guess, and uh, don't remember that. But I like, I and I don't remember, like, there was two dudes, Lance and BJ Bales, who's from Kansas City, and said, 
they tried to wake me up or they woke me up and the first thing I did I apparently I, I don't remember it now plead that I accidentally I accidentally punched him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen. <laughs> like, yeah. You don't wake up drunk dudes in the bushes, honestly. You just let them be drunk dudes in the bush. Yeah. In the, well, it wasn't really a bush. It was the guy's yard that had like a... Uh, he had fake trees and shit. Like a, yeah. Uh, that That's basically... But he had watched me like... They were like, they were like Davey, you can't drink anymore. After I, because I drank that bottle of Jack, uh, that gallon, it was like a gallon. Uh, I drank that in like 45 minutes, and then like they had a little bar, so I was out. Yeah. And I was like, fuck it, give me another drink. They're like, you can't have any more drinks. I'm like, well, if I can't buy drinks, I'll just take people's drinks. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's what I was doing. And that's when John first really saw me hang out. Like, uh, and uh, I think I was waving a knife at one point, just. Having a good t- country time. Yeah, that's a good country time in the city. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so, in what year did you, I guess, what year was it that you started again? Uh, I think 2002. Okay, so you were there. That would have been right when I graduated. That's the year I graduated high school. Yeah, so I've been, like, I've been doing this for a long time. And then, um, like, the, one of my mentors was, like, told me, because he, he understood I wasn't, privy to any of the entertainment stuff right you know i i'd come from a pretty like interesting place and i he's like he would just tell me straight up rick ingram who's from kansas city was like none of these people are your friends it's like you know it's not what you think it is there's i was like but we all want to do comedy like because they that was their dream like right. that, that was their their goal their dream to be famous right I never had that dream. Like you were just there. You just wanted to do comedy at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I was like, you wanted to be. A, you were a working man. Yeah, you were working. Yeah. So it wasn't. It wasn't like I wanted to like be in television yeah, or no, the movies. It was ne- yeah, it was never my thing. And then you know, I thought of like I mean, I mean like. Like, and I tried doing TV, but I got tired of that shit real quick because. I mean, granted, I did some shitty movies that weren't, like, you would never find them on. You wouldn't find them on Tubi or yeah. Any, 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 any. And I always played the Klansman. Or, of course, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, we need a racist guy. Call Davey. <laughs> like, yeah. He knows these people. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I did a movie, and I fought over, uh, I, got, um, I got fired from a movie I did because I fought with the director over the meth trailer. Oh God! About the appearance of it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't fucking canon enough for you. The meth trailer wasn't quite up to fucking proper stats. It was too it was too Hollywooded. Well, okay, so being in drug houses, you know, like I told the guy, I argued for a good thirty minutes. Cause, yeah, because I'm like, hey man, you got to fix those blinds. He goes, what do you mean? I was like, they're straight. They, they, you have to. They have to be broken, like they have to look like they're looking for aliens. What do you know about this? I'm like, I know this, like, cause because I've been the guy. I've looked for aliens, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. That's how you know if you go rent a rental house if the blinds in it are all fucked up. You know somebody's been living there tweaking their fucking brain out because <laughs> like, you can see where they're like. <laughs> and then uh, like. Yeah, and then you need random car parts. I told them that part. Oh, you got to have that? You got to have uh, maybe a sink tour part? Yeah. I always thought people doing meth is like, uh, it's like starting 700 projects to step two. Yeah. (laughs) Like, you tear this wall out, and then you would take apart the air conditioning unit, and then you would start uh, rebuilding your VCR while I'm also building a light. And then the next thing you know, it's like a week later and you're waking up and your house is in shambles, your motorcycle's in the driveway yeah. in a hundred parts and you're going, oh, fuck, what did I do? So this is the, like, it's been a long time. The last time, uh, like, I think I was like, tw- this was when I did the Fuck You show at Wendy's Tavern in my town after I just got past the comedy store. So we went down to the Best Western and 
This is the last time. Splurging I... as one would do. Yeah. Well, it's the, only... <laughs> it's, it's the nicest hotel in town. Splurging as <laughs> one does in town. Yeah. And so we're sitting there and we did the like, you know, um, so I smoked out of the light bulb. Right? Yeah. But I'm staying at my mom, my buddy's mom's house, who's the nicest lady in the world. Right. And now I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking hard because I just fucking hit the light bulb. And, um, yeah, so and, you got that good mercury mixed with the meth. Yeah, You're ready to yeah. rock and roll. Yeah, that's why I, I could, I don't see the reason to be a vegan because I'm, yeah. Done, yeah. All, <laughs> yeah. I've done all this stuff in my life where, so I chew tobacco and so I put a shoe in and I drop some in the carpet. So, you know, you're tweaking. So I'm like, fuck, all right, let me get the vacuum. Like, you know, I, I vacuumed and it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a big bathroom. So I literally hurt his mom was worried about me because I had literally spent five hours in this bathroom vacuuming the carpet. Yeah. <laughs> like this little small square. Yeah. Little bitty space. Fucking wild. So since. You know, you were off and on in L.A. for 16 years, you said. And now since then, are you sort of just nomadic? Like, yeah. Or is, is, like, Minnesota, like, your home base if you had for, one? For a couple months. I, Kentucky was my home base for five years because um, I went there during COVID. Okay. Like, it was just a random thing. Yeah. Um, and I liked their gun laws. I, is I that think, when you were sort of done with L.A. was during oh, COVID? Been, like, yeah, I, I was done with it because I just. Like, it's 16 years at a club, even though, like, I can go in there and do time and stuff like that. It was just, it was time for me to move on. Yeah. Because, like, like, there's a lot of dudes that just hang out there forever and ever and ever. Um, and, and if you're getting spots, and I was, but I was just, I was done with, like, like, a, um, I was done just being around, like, that the set, well, at a certain point, you look around, it's like, okay, all these people have just stayed here. They never tried. They never advanced. Yeah. Like, And you realize, like, oh, the only way I'm going to be able to go farther is I have to go do things in other places. Yeah. 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 Instead of just sit here and... Listen to the same sad people tell yeah. you about who, why it's so-and-so's fault that they never made it big. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. It's not, like, it's uh, because, like... The one blessing coming from my background, I guess, is because I talked to a dude that was at the store, like in Austin. I talked to a guy that was in management at the at the store, and we were at Rogan's Club, just sitting at the table. And he goes, "What? Why did you? Uh, why did you leave L.A.?" And he goes, "I said because it was my time to go. Like it's it just my time. I was getting late night spots all the time and whatever, but it was it was." It was somebody else's turn to do late night spots. Yeah. It's not, I'm not like, I'm, I'm cool. I'll come in and do it. Like, but everything has a, an expiration date. Like LA, yeah. LA have an expiration. And then, like I said, I'm like, you know, it's, it's cool. LA and it's cool when you're young. LA is cool when you're young, but when you're in your late thirties, forties, it just like, why am I here? Like, yeah. you know, it's like I'm paying X amount of money. I'm dealing with traffic. I'm just not happy. And especially yeah. like, I mean, and that's, but that that's what happened. Like the, that's the beauty of this day and age of comedy at the same, like a lot more people are drawing outside of like LA because of, YouTube and stuff like that instead of just sitting there. It, well, it's not just comedy, right? Yeah. It's it's anything. Yeah. You no longer have to be in one of these meccas to do anything. I mean, like we're in the middle of a uh, of the country in a basement. Yeah. In the hood, yeah. like, and by all accounts, I've built a television studio on a working man's <laughs> budget. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like really? So like anybody can do anything. It's just a lot of people don't have that, um, wherewithal to, to see that. And like even John, like that's what I've realized about him. It's like, Oh yeah, John could have probably stayed in LA, but he also knew he could come back here. And now he's creating this scene here yeah. all over town 
And, and again, so like, because I caught you uh, uh, over the summer. I went to the Strawberry Hill, um, the the comedy crawl, uh, and at four o three, I walked up there for a few minutes, and you were on right when I got there. So that's when I had. Yeah. You know, and I kept telling him like, oh, when he comes in town, like I want him to come over. I want to talk to this guy because I felt like we might have some things in common. Oh, you yeah. Know? The drug- I recognize a lot of myself in your comedy. You know, unfortunately, like a lot of sad, miserable people recognize <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, themselves uh, in your comedy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, not to, but to that L.A. point, though, like when you left, like there's limited time in L.A. So it's like whatever you branch out now you get hundreds of hours of stays you know you're getting 50 mm. minutes yeah 68, it's eight 90 minute sets if you want not these like 15 12. yeah well and also right like i mean at a point like i mean goddamn like probably a lot of your guys's friends left right like yeah. i mean uh, it, 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 it as a comedy fan watching from the outside um it went from all we heard about for years, I mean, I got turned on to Joe Rogan's podcast by a buddy of mine, and then he was the one that turned me on to Kill Tony when it first started. So I've been like deep embedded in this for years and years and years as a fan, and like it went from everything being about the comedy store yeah. to immediately the pandemic happened, and since then you ain't heard a fucking word about it anymore. And yeah. now, and and you kind of hear about Austin, but you really don't hear about a specific place anymore you just it just opened this world all world up to where you know like why why compete in la when you can travel around yeah. and like it's same thing for john like he's here like yeah he's competing uh, uh, i guess not competing but he's in the in the running to be the guy that opens up for all these people that you guys know yeah. in a town where no one else fucking knows them or has relationships with them. So it's, it sort of works out. You know what I mean? Well, and it's like for like, if like, if you're not like, I'm not, um, I was never into acting. Like, yeah. So I was like, why am I here? Cause I'm not into acting. Like, right. I mean, heaven forbid. I, I mean, I got thrown out of like acting classes before being me. Uh, yeah. uh, I got banned from second city. Uh, I, and I wasn't even in their main, like I, I got banned from paying to take classes there. Yeah. (laughs) Did you get a refund? No, I, they, I I was going to re up my classes and they were like, no, thank thank you. No, thank you. Cause what, and I still like, cause it it was more PC sensitive comedy. Oh yeah. Yeah. That would be like, what is that? Like, uh, fuck. Yeah. That's like the, um. Oh, the Nerdist so, guys. All the Nerdist guys were yeah. always at Second City doing yeah, shit. That, Kumail that, Nanjiami. And- so this is the, 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 and I still remember this, um, like, and it was funny. It was funny. It shocked everybody. But um, they, so they give you a scene, right? They give you a scene. And uh, his name was Forsberg. He was the teacher. I still remember his look because his mom help create second city um his mom or he like they were like here's the scene you're in a basement and uh you're calling your wife down to the basement and so this was during the lacey peterson thing (laughs) so like this is the very beginning of the lacey peterson thing so they're like, call your wife down to the basement. Figure out a way to get your wife into the basement. And I go, okay. And so my mind automatically goes, hey, Lacey, there's something I want to show you. I want to show you this furnace. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Hilarious. Like, and they were like, whoa, like, this is a little too far. You um, can't do this. <laughs> like, this is, and like, and then maybe one, like, one time I showed up. I had two beers or something, and I'd been drinking a little bit, and Forsberg was telling me how to be funny. And I was like, listen, you fat fuck, you, you, you're you not funny at all. Yeah, <laughs> you're here, dude. <laughs> like, you're, I, That's the thing, right? It's always the teacher. It's like, you failed at this. Yeah. I, I don't even know. So I thought that was funny. And then 
Um, the other class I got was it John might remember it was used to be in uh, the the trades papers. It was uh, for it was a commercial class I did, and he t- refused to take my money too. It was uh, this dude taught a commercial class called "Hey, I saw you on that commercial," and so he, he was a big commercial actor, and uh, and so I, I go up there, like first of all, it was such a phony thing. Because people would go up there and, like, get, go in front of the camera. And, like, he went alphabetically, so I went last. So I had to watch all this patheticness in my head. Like, right. <laughs> like, I, first of all, I, why am I here? Because at the time, they weren't using crippled people for spokespersons. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, right. Why am I here? Like, I just had nothing better to do. So I'm audited in the class. Yeah, you weren't going to be the next Corky from Life Goes no, On. No, because I was, <laughs> especially since how I did, uh, like, so the guy, like, these people would go up and it was so weird because people would go up and be like, I've always dreamed of being a commercial actor. That's what I want to do. And, for, and I was like, what? Like, that's what, like, and I'd listen to that. They're like, yeah. So I get up there and they're like, um, uh, basically they were like, so just tell us about your night. And I'm like, oh, I did a bunch of cocaine. I never wanted to be a commercial actor. I'm not going to fake that like the rest of these people yeah <laughs> just like and so he told me never to come back to his class because uh i like i may i mean i made everybody in the class laugh because they asked me i was like yeah hey, man and i may have had a trans prostitute blow me or something it was fucking cool i did a bunch of coke just yeah. i was i was just saying whatever i could to be shocking yeah. in front of this class because i was like I just wanted to, them to remember. Now, if you would have told them that today, they would have cheered you on no, for your they, progressiveness. <laughs> like at that time, it wasn't very progressive. Yeah, at that time, it was a very shunned upon thing, right? Yeah, it was 05. How yeah. the times have changed. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. No. So, uh, you've been in town. You did Tuesday night at Hillsiders. Yeah, we'll be with in. James well, Johan. Yeah, that he's funny. He Johan, the rural genius. Yeah, yeah. It was we. That was a great show. It was a lot of like, like progressive thoughts being thrown with me and him, um, like things that people, they they just weren't ready for all the positivity that was coming out of our. Yeah, mind. that yeah. <laughs> the, I've been trying to convince John to let me live stream those shows. Uh, the but it could be it could be weird. Well, not necessarily with like guys like you, but like with the local people. Um, yeah. You, so you want to be your own ver. So like, I would like the. I mean, you want to be like the milk toast version of like Kill Tony, or how's that? No, I just we thought it would be cool to like instead of it being like a thing where like the original concept would be like, if the comics are down with it, we live stream the show you know what i mean and then immediately afterwards it's them like we're on the stage doing this but live at the bar right afterwards so people will like would find out about the person you know what i mean yeah that might like yeah that's john's like so i'm not gonna volunteer like but that's not a bad idea but that's like whatever everybody it's it's also like trying to convince the comics because i know like guys like you and and James, like you're traveling around, yeah, doing doing us doing shit. Well, you know what I, I mean? I mean, there's there's like certain shows I probably would have loved, like when we did uh, Turney's Bar yeah. in Lee Summit. I would have allowed that because I don't do any material. Right. I, I just yell at people for forty minutes and tell them like, I mean, there was a couple you could tell that they weren't happy and they were cheating on each other all the time. Yeah. But that was that was fun. Yeah. Uh, um, just like turn, it was fun. Like you know, um, so there's like there's certain settings that I would like if it's like Turney's and Lee Summit, like because John will tell you that's like it's on Wednesday, like I, I'll do some jokes, then I realize oh why am I doing jokes because yeah. people. People like, are here eating dinner and having beers. Like no, no, they're not. Nobody's eating. Everybody's drinking, and it's uh, everybody. They don't. 
they don't want like ha ha funny. They want like, hey, he's just as miserable as I am being here. Yeah. Like it's like, I mean, when I did, um, and I learned that from when I did Stanford's and Sons because, like. Craig Glazier made me do it Wednesday, which was no point in me doing a Wednesday because like, God rest their soul. But he was like, when I first did it or when I did it, like he could, he would call John and complain because when I first did the club, he goes, Hey John, how come David doesn't have a guest list? I'm like, I don't know anybody in Kansas City. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> <laughs> that old fucking con, man. That's when a very wise Tim Gaither goes, just put a bunch, make names up and give it to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just oh, make okay. up the names. Yeah. No, but I think there's some kind of show that we can do. And I think also, like, if you knew that ahead of time, right? Yeah. Like, if that was the vibe of the show where it's like, hey, you could just come here and do... Like, uh, I mean, yeah, you, know, you fuck just, around. Like, it would be like, um, like, like, what was it? Jay Ogerson did a crowd work show on Peacock when that was alive, mm. like Peacock Live. So it could, like, like for like the, like for like turning shit, it could just be a crowd work show. Yeah. Kansas City crowd. Like, you know, just because you're not burning any of your material and you're just yelling at people. So that's that, a great I mean, idea. I mean, for me, that's that's not an issue with that because I'm not. I write enough. If I did some jokes or whatever, but crowd work is bar crowds, you know. Because I mean, it's it's a different element. Like when you do, because I do a lot of bar shit, right? A lot of like, so there's a different element from a comedy club. club. Yeah, because yeah. it's 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 a battle. Like if you. If you're going in there not willing, like, I'm going to stick to my jokes, you're going to fail at a bar show because, like, a real bar show, not a bar show that does comedy all the time where they're trained audiences. Right. Um, like, yeah, you're talking about when you go into a bar and it's like, oh, next Wednesday's midget wrestling. Tonight we've got uh, this comic that's in town. Yeah. Like, and those people are, are just in that bar every night. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're just basically you have to grab their attention cuz you're like they're used you're interrupting their Cody Jenks songs about suicide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a lot like Hillsiders. <laughs> I'll be yeah. honest. There's a country band there tonight. Yeah. So are you are you this is a Friday. I don't I'm going to try to get this thing whipped out pretty quick here, but what uh are you are you guys doing something tonight? No, we're just we came by here to do this and then um, th like if you get it up, I'll be, I'll be in the militia land as you like to. Like, yeah. Oh, it'll be up within today or tomorrow. Oh, so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll be in. Uh, well, I'm gonna try. Hey, all my Efreda soap like people, uh, subscribe to his channel. Um. Like, oh yeah, that might get us over the thousand if the mm -hmm. if the people from Eastern Washington get on board. Don't yeah. mind. Uh. The wizard shit, like it's okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> just come along for the ride. Like, yeah. there's some car shit too, you know. Don't mind that call me that's on the network. He's uh, he's an okay dude. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, just a bit of a Marxist. Yeah. Just so yeah, but then you'll see some nice polite comments about. Oh yeah, please feel free to land based him. That's yeah. totally acceptable. He'll yeah, so. he'll take all the. Um, he won't, doesn't even read the comments. I do. So, so. Th this is this is uh, years ago. Um, uh, there's a comic named Eddie Pepitone, mm -hmm. and I put him in my thread on Facebook or something like. I said, I, I was like, I was get, doing it for clicks, right? Yeah, because I know. I have very liberal friends from L.A. that are on my Facebook. Right. And I have my other friends. Right. So I I, I was trolling, to yeah. be, be honest. Yeah. I was just like, let's see. Because I saw, like, some, like, L.A. person put up, like, a pro Bernie Sanders thing. So I was like, I, like th that's cool. Everybody you know is liberal. Like, yeah. Let me put it up on my Facebook because I have half and half. Yeah. <laughs> like, let let's me... let's watch. Let's incite a riot right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is what a little I'm online doing. riot. Yeah. That's basically, and I have comics 
on my thing, like Eddie Pepitone, these people really exist. Like, like, yeah. yeah. So like these are most of America. <laughs> yeah, like, this is like they're getting like my comic friends are like trying to use like this logic is my, yeah. and reason yeah. <laughs> with the, with people from Eastern Washington. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, you're a pussy. Yeah. Like you can't even turn a wrench. Like, yeah. Like, they're Do like, you know how to change a starter? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah that, 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 that was like, like you got to tell me like, what was the last time you, Oh, you worked at a barista. You were a barista. Like, yeah. like, you know, uh, like, so, um, yeah, and like, uh, yeah, it's and then we have, uh, like, I'm in Soap Lake at my, the famous Del Red, the AKA the Bloody Bucket on okay. the on the, I think what day is that? That's a Saturday. I'm doing that. Um, the, the sixth, I'm doing that sixth. I'm at the Oleander Saloon in Mankato, Minnesota, March second, and then I'm doing a show in Gibbon, Minnesota at a. The brewery, I, I can never pronounce it. Whitmore, I think it's called, or like it's the only brewery in Gibbon, Minnesota. Right. So like, there's just, only one. Yeah, yeah. Just put so if one. you're in Gibbon, yeah, you'll be at the brewery. Yeah, brewery. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> if you're in the Gibbon area, you know what the fuck he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Setting up a monthly in Waco, starting mm. in April. Yeah. So like we're we're trying to do Waco and even San Antonio. Um, we're trying to set something up there because that's where one of my best friends, Joe, we grew up together. Uh, if you ever go to San Antonio, oh, uh, come Joe's to- in San Antonio or Waco? No, he's in San Antonio. Because I would, if you told me you had friends in Waco, totally believe that. <laughs> yeah, well, that, Waco seems a lot like the town you grew up in, Washington. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he's like, yeah. I mean, I did like the Netflix of all the propaganda they used against David Koresh. Yeah. It's all propaganda. Yeah. Um, so great um, guy yeah great, great, <laughs> great world pretty much probably most famous guy from waco yeah yeah he was a good he was a good musician too yeah like so apparently we had a way with the ladies yeah from what i hear had a way with the ladies <laughs> <laughs> like, well that would that's propaganda like if you, if you like if you want i think if you all you have to do republican ferry county if you want the real news they have their own militia newspaper. Oh yeah, so we get that one. <laughs> we'll I'll subscribe online. <laughs> oh, do you, do you think they have an online presence? Uh, I'm but, guessing they probably have a website on the dark web where I can at least send my fifty cents an issue. <laughs> no, it's pay, they 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 still do paper. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Where I could pay, I you have to pay. I got to pay them somehow. So. Yeah, yeah. Um. That's yeah. tremendous. Yeah, it's, it's just a, on some guys at home printing it on regular fucking printer paper, like <laughs> stapling it, like a fucking school newsletter, <laughs> single sided. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, it was it was a because uh, yeah, that's the, the like so it's all about county, like even for me being from Grand County, Ferry County was the actual like like that was that was the guy that tried to run against. Um, Jay Inslee as a governor. Okay. It was in Ferry County. His name was Culp. Okay. Like, that's how bad the Republicans have it in Washington State. They had to get a sheriff of a of a county of like, I'd say ten thousand to run against a Democratic governor. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> Jesus like, Christ. <laughs> like that was our big that was our big Trump guy. Was yeah. Culp. And it's like and you still people have stickers of Culp. On the thing, um, yeah, it's like, yeah, I mean, like, you know, once you get on the other side of the mountains, um, because you'll just see random people, so you know, uh, you'll find out who the governor is real quick in eastern Washington, because they all have stickers that say, fuck Inslee, like, <laughs> like, Jay Inslee, yeah, he's, they, like, because they, Washington's weird, it's like, some states, I don't know how it is in Kansas or Missouri, but Washington State, you can run for three terms. Which is a little much. Three terms of governor. Yeah, I don't know what it is here. I uh, I I practice Mad Max politics. Oh, what's that? That's where I just like want to. I just basically want gas. I just need gasoline for my old cars. Yeah. You know, I just give me some shoulder pads, maybe yeah. a doom buggy, and then fuck off. Give me your. I'm gonna steal your gas and leave me alone. I can't. I can't legally vote. So. 
Oh, okay. That's good. You could move to Ferry County and be the new editor of the militia paper. Yeah, I could be. Yeah. I could I could probably be sheriff of Ferry County, <laughs> yeah. honestly. They'd yeah. probably hire a convicted felon to be sheriff. Oh, yeah. We, we did one time in, I think, early 2000s. Our district attorney was getting disbarred, still practicing law in our county. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, went, I need a lawyer, and I looked up our old lawyer and found out he was disbarred and in federal prison. So I said, damn, we had a good one on our hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a real good one. <laughs> well, shit, man. Davey, it was great meeting you. I hope uh, whenever yeah. you're in town, dude, if you want to come by, just yeah, no, tell this fucking guy to uh, bring you over Yeah. every time. And like I said... Uh, Old Trampus baseball John over here. Dormeyer, subscribe if you have YouTube. Yeah, if Trampus and Dormeyer <laughs> don't subscribe, I'm going to be fucking mad, dude. <laughs> I need These guys also need to find me on Instagram because I'm real interested. I don't, think, I don't think they have Instagram. No, maybe Facebook. Yeah, they, I, I'm, real, I'm real interested in what a dude named Trampus looks like. I've, I don't know why I'm mystified by that. Oh, Tramp, I, last time me and Trampus hung out, I think we were at... Um, we are at the old water hole, and he wanted to fight a dude because he had glitter on his pants. Yeah. Uh, maybe he was at the strip club. No, no. He was like the, the fashionable. Oh, yeah, they were fashionable like, glitter. It was fashion yeah. glitter. Yeah. Even worse. Um, Everybody, you can find Davey at, on at Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, I don't do Twitter because I don't like him. But, yeah, Instagram at Davey Wester. Uh, Davey Wester on Facebook. Um, And I have Davey Wester on youtube so okay and i'll put links down in the description for all that and if you see him go uh don't fucking say anything cross to him because he might punch you but you could go pay to see his comedy show (laughs) (laughs) you might catch him and john um out uh you know trying to get that new stadium built in kc for their beloved royals you know i'm not a royals fan no (laughs) i think john's totally against that (laughs) i don't care i don't care what they do i could honestly oh john's pro the stadium yeah john John, and i i I, like you know kc news like i'm pro like because when he took me there like they don't want to tear this down i'm like what like what is here not to tear down like yeah um, uh i I told I talked about this on my live stream thing last night, but I told everybody like, look, I don't like that sucks. But I watched uh, I'm sorry for the, um, you know, there's two options. You could be a small business and go with the flow yeah. and be pro it and like probably get taken care of. Right. Because they're yeah. not going to take they're, they're they're going to take care of people or it, you can. Uh, just fucking lose a battle because it's already been decided. No matter yeah. what all these people think, they've they've decided they're putting that stadium there. It's going to go there, and all these people with this grandiose idea that uh, there's all these these uh, freelance Everybody land thinks- developers and fucking surveyors now that think they know there's a much better place. Well, the only other places in the city would involve removing people's homes. And if you live in the fucking crossroads and you pay outrageous rent, I don't fucking care. You can afford to live in a myriad of places. But you can't put a fucking stadium in the ghetto and take down a bunch of affordable housing. A bunch of Section um, Eight or yeah, yeah. I, 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 where I grew up at is where they put that racetrack. Oh, okay. And so my parents' house is literally, you can see the towers of the racetrack from mm. my parents' front yard now. But when that happened, we watched as an entire uh, uh, small village of houses that were similar to this. Imagine if this whole area was taken away yeah. because of a racetrack. Well, when they did that, there's all these people we knew that they they embraced it and they said, okay, and they were taken care of. They fucking moved houses from foundations. They bought people houses. No one that, that went along with the flow did not, they all came out better ahead yeah. in life than they were before. And then I watched people that we knew that fought it tooth and nail and they damn near ended up fucking poor. poor because they got nothing in the end. They got because pennies compared to what they would have gotten because otherwise. The, the, the misconception on, like, this is, like, this isn't, like, my, like, one good thing about being from where I'm from, nobody supports eminent domain. Because, yeah. they, because eminent domain, people are like, oh, we give you a fair value. No, you don't. Like, right. you, you don't really do that at all because you do it off of, 
the val like half the value of the house. Like right. you don't really do You don't really do it off the real shit. But if you if the people that are building the thing come in and they make the deal first, yeah, then you're gonna get some money. If you fight and wait for the government to come knocking with paperwork, you're 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 getting shit. Yeah, so. I mean it's like to, that to use my sir. It's like if you want the government, like I have to go in. I, that's why I don't have a handicap sticker, is because when I if I want a handicap sticker, I have to prove to the government I have cerebral palsy. Yeah. To to get a handicap sticker, that's the bureaucracy of our federal government. Right. We can't use like. And it's check. very fucking hard because I asked because I'm like because of a back injury and I have had several back surgeries. I'm like 24.2 percent disabled on record because of a fucking work comp deal. Yeah. So that's like just above the limit of what's required to be able to have a fucking mm -hmm. handicap pass. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was asking my doctor. I was like, Yeah, how do I get one of those? She's like, Dude, it's really fucking hard now. I was like, Ah, oh, damn it, never mind. I'll yeah, just I'll just keep walking. I only wanted it for um those. Uh, you know, like when the, you're going the, to like a concert or something, or like the, like the, you know where you have to use a a meter or whatever, right? right? You yeah, know? yeah, perfect for that. Yeah. But all right, well, everybody, do like Davey said and like and subscribe and all the shit. And um, if you're from Eastern Washington, welcome, welcome to the family. Thank you for subscribing, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw. Hit the like and subscribe buttons and check out one of these other videos. We'll see you next time.